I'm often asked how long we've been making strings. In about 1975 or six, I hired a genealogist to go to Saleh, our hometown, which is in the Abruzzi Mountains. The baptismal records go all the way back to 1680. And we traced the father's occupation back contiguously where they put Cordero, string maker. And Saleh is like a little string making town. There was several families that came out of that little town and are still making strings today. La Bella there and the galley company, they came from Sali. And there's a small firm, Dorazio, they're from Sali, Italy as well. They were shepherds in this town, so they learned how to utilize the intestines from the sheep to make orchestral strings, and they were pretty good at it. Sally was always troubled with earthquakes, so our grandfather immigrated here in 1905 after there was another earthquake. He was quite young. There was a big shortage of music strings, quality music strings. In the turn of the century, uh, United States were really in demand, and our grandfather started to import strings from his family in Italy. And during World War I, there were a lot of embargoes, and Germans were sinking trade ships, and it was difficult to get the strings from his family anymore. So our grandfather started working with a brother-in-law, Rocco. They weren't related, but they had the same name. By coincidence, his wife, my grandmother, Anna, her maiden name was Dario, which is a very popular name in the town of Sali. If you go to the cemetery, you'll see like, you know, 20 or 30% of the tombstones are Dario's. So Rocco taught our grandfather the trade, and they were partners for a while. And my grandfather really took to it. And he had two or three people from the hometown or even family members working for him. And he got quite good at making violin strings and harp strings and viola strings and so on. And like on Fridays, he would take the strings he made in a satchel and he would go to the city and he would peddle them to the retailers or the distributors that needed strings. And they got good at making strings. Our grandfather, he was satisfied you know, with this small home cottage industry business. My dad was much more ambitious. He was also a pretty good musician. He was an upright bass player, used to gig all the time. And, you know, big band era stuff, 30s, 40s. I remember as a kid, we went to a wedding or something, he would get up and sit in and play on the bass. And it did make him understand how to talk to musicians and what they need. And he really understood clearly where some of the opportunities were in the string business to develop something new or better and so on. So when he came along in the 30s, when he was 20 years old or so, he started working with his dad and they changed the company name to C. Dario and Son. My dad immediately was restless and was not gonna sit there winding violin strings like his dad all day long. He was just a very curious guy. His curiosity is something that is like a genetic family trait. He was going to try to get into new areas. And John D'Angelico and my dad became very close friends. And in the late 30s, around 38, dad started working with him. And D'Angelico was a very intuitive person and he knew what levers to turn to experiment to make the strings better. And you're talking about a time when the most popular string was a national black diamond, silver plated copper wound on round core, one gauge available. It was the model 754. There was no selection. Nobody experimented with different alloys and so on. D'Angelico kept pushing him to make the string more flexible so that it would have a bigger fundamental tone and project more and really drive the top of the, the instrument. So D'Angelico kept pushing my dad to make thinner cores, thinner cores, thinner cores until the strings would break and then they would go back up a little bit. Immediately, the really great players were like, wow, this is incredible. You know, the guitar really sounds much better. And those specs really are pretty much what almost everybody uses today. D'Angelico and my dad developed a new paradigm. They literally invented the modern acoustic string. Mm -hmm.